So I first would like to start with, uh, for those who are not very familiar with it, um, what is autonomous driving? There are five levels of autonomous driving, starting with level zero, which is zero, um, all the way to level five, which means that a vehicle can be driving by itself under any circumstances, any condition, anywhere in the world without the help of a human driver. Level five of, uh, uh, of autonomy is a big deal. It's not, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. It'll take probably another decade or two maybe before we get autonomous driving everywhere in the world under any condition. But what is happening now, today, at a very, very fast pace is level four, which is full autonomy of a vehicle without a human driver being, having to take control over the vehicle in <laughs> specific uh, geographies what the Department of Transportation is called, calls an ODD, an Operating Design Domain. And um, this is happening right now. Um, the leading um, countries in the world that are leading the world in uh, autonomous vehicles are the United States that uh, started the trend more than 10 years ago with the DARPA Grant Challenge in 2007, um, where um, some teams from universities in the United States were tasked with the uh, idea of, of, of taking a vehicle around a, a loop um, and drive it autonomously. And that was, the idea was that the military needed that kind of uh, technology and they wanted to see how far the university had been going. Um, it, uh, in terms of that technology. And, and, and three teams, um, Stanford, Carnegie Mellon, and I think MIT, came up first um, out of this challenge and then eventually became the companies that you might know of today, Waymo, uh, Delphi, and GM, and Cruise, and, and all those uh, great companies that, are, um, that have emerged uh, these days. The second largest player in the world for autonomous vehicles is China. China is very big, um, very um, isolated in the sense that they are right now not letting some, any, anyone else, any other foreign uh, company be um, doing autonomous driving in China. But they have their own companies that are very, very large, like Baidu, Tencent, Alibaba, that have been working on autonomous driving for a few years now and uh, because of the size of the country um, have been making a lot of progress uh, recently. And then you have a few other areas such as Israel which is um, um, very um, technologically advanced and uh, I the Israelis are very, very good at developing hardware and they've, uh, they've helped develop a lot of the sensors that are needed for autonomous driving. And then you have Europe that's currently a little bit behind because of the fragmented situation of the European Union and the absence of regulation that is um, um, conducive to um, autonomous driving over there. But with companies like the German automakers, we have no doubt that they're going to be catching up very, very quickly. So what are the tools um, of autonomous driving? Well, you need essentially four types of tools. You need a very, very powerful computing equipment. You need um, a sensor suite. You need algorithms and data. And you need very, very robust networking to communicate with the vehicles. The computing equipment is um, what the, the, the improvement in the computing equipment over the last two or three years is what made autonomous driving happen so quickly because of the amount of data that can be crunched with those new uh, computers. So here you have an example of the newest NVIDIA chip. <coughs> NVIDIA is one of the leaders in computing equipment for autonomous driving. And this is the picture of the new chip that's going to come out at the end of this year called Pegasus. The Pegasus chip is, has um, uh, two GPUs and two CPUs embedded into one chip 
that has an enormous amount of computing power at a pretty low energy level, about 30 watts if, I, um, if they can achieve that, um, and an enormous amount of crunching, you know, capability for crunching data, as well as um, redundancies for automotive grade um, functional safety. If one GPU fails, the other one can take over. If one CPU fails, the other one can take over. It's the first chip that has that kind of functional safety and redundancy on the market. The sensor suite is a bunch of things that you may or may not have heard about, but you have like, first of all, you have a series of cameras um, that give you a picture, surround picture, 360 view of what's going on around the vehicle. The second type of sensor, which is extremely important for autonomous driving, are LIDARs, light emitting radars. And those uh, uh, devices, LIDARs, um, which are very expensive these days and hopefully will come down in price as the automobile market matures in this technology and starts ordering millions of them. But the LIDARs are uh, devices that enable you to make a point cloud um, image of your environment and be very precise and a 3D image um, of the environment. It, that enables you to localize the vehicle, it enables um, 3D mapping, which is necessary in this business, in this industry, and in, it um, basically um, enables the vehicle to see where, uh, like a human eye would see, to see where it's going. So that means um, literally understanding the size of a curb, you know, where are uh, traffic lights located, um, buildings, etc. anything that's static in the environment. And then finally, you add um, other um, types of sensors to that suite, which are uh, more traditional radars to, s to see with a, a, a longer range, about 200, 300 meters of range, and then ultrasonic sensors that are a very short range that gives you a view of what's going on around the vehicle in a two to two and a half meter range around the vehicle. So with that suite of sensors, we kind of see um, from very close to pretty far out. Um, that's a view of what uh, LiDAR will uh, see, what the computer sees when it, it, it um, um, decrypts a LiDAR. Um, um, algorithm and data is another thing that's improved considerably and it's essentially what's so-called machine learning or artificial intelligence and it's using con convolutional ne neur uh, neural networks um, to be able to essentially um, um, perceive, it's, 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 it helps in perception what to decrypt what the cameras and the lighters are seeing and to make sense of it. And that's where artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, takes um, uh, um, a, a lot of um, um, make, make, make um, are, are so critical for uh, autonomous driving. Um, it, it enables to look at objects and classify them. Say this is a cat, this is a dog, this is a child, this is a, 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 a car, you know, and, and, uh, and then help the computer make predictive uh, decisions based on what the object is. Um, and then finally, networking uh, is very important. We need to know where the vehicle is, the vehicle needs to communicate back to the base. And in um, our case, for example, where we have developed a very sophisticated teleoperation system when we where we can actually drive the vehicle remotely from our office, this um, uh, requires a lot of data, and so you need to have a very robust communication system. Um, we generate about four um, terabytes of data per day of driving, which is considerable.